will improve your fuel economy, but can you gain three laps that way? Uh, I don't think so, but we're gonna we're gonna see what it looks like when we get down to the very end, you know. Boy, are they hoping for a caution flag count. One more before this race is over. Oh, car trouble. trouble. Here it got it. Spinning, crashing. That is the Trevor Boyce car. In big trouble out of turn number four. It's a hard way to get a caution. That was not the way that Richard Childers wanted it. He's moving around. He's just cut the switches off. He's coming out of the car after taking a ride like that, getting out that quickly. Another indication of how well these automobiles are put together because that was not an easy ride. You know, Ned, when he, when he reached up to turn the switches off, my first thought was he was trying to start the car to go again. You're watching it live here on CBS. Let's look at it in replay as to what happened to Trevor Boyce, who's been running right up there all afternoon. Okay, he gets hooked. It looks like that's Tommy Ellis' car right behind him, and they just touch enough, and it shoots his car down to the inside. The air gets underneath the car, flips it over backwards. It hits hard on the top, scoots up the end of pit road there on the top. It hits the grass area, flips back over all the way over and back on the wheels and up on the side and lands back on the wheels once again like a big bucking horse. Summer rodeo ride for Trevor Boyce of Calgary. You know, the, as the rodeo performer would say, he, he chose a good steed for that performance there, I'll tell you. Stopping to tie his shoe. Let's take a look and replay. This is, they're coming off of turn four. It looks like he drifts out just a little bit, Ken. Tommy Ellis on the outside of him there, and they hit just enough to send him around, and the air got underneath the car, sends it right upside down. Benny, what happens when that air gets under there? I don't know, Ned. Just I, you the know, pressure? At Daytona, this watching this action that we're seeing on the screen reminds me so much of the Ricky Rudd crash from Daytona in the Bush class that we had in February. But, you know, and they re, they paved that section down in Daytona because they felt like that the cars coming off the pavement onto the dirt made the car bounce and therefore got air under the cars. That car never reached the grass before it flipped over. Right. So that destroys that thought that they had. They moved that wall back too, have they? Not? They moved the wall back and they paved that entire area thinking that that was some of the problem. But as you notice... When uh, you think of the Randy LaJoy crash where he took that several others like Harry Gantt several years ago. You could see he, he was all ready for business and I thought you were right. He was reaching around to see if he could get the thing fired. No, he was just turning it down. Oh, that's too bad for James Hilton as well as for Trevor Boyce. James Hilton, one of the really nice people. Here they are again. As they come off of that turn, he went up into the groove there and just clipped the front bumper of Tommy Ellis's car number four. And it doesn't take much at those kind of speeds. It shot him right down across the racetrack. That's Phil Parsons there doing a very heads up piece of driving, got slowed down enough. And Ben, as you say, just as he got to the edge of the pavement, getting onto the grass is when he got airborne. Tommy doesn't have to look for trouble. Trouble finds him. I and mean, that car just, just came up on him. And yeah, what do you got? Nowhere he could go. No, nothing he could do because there was cars right on his bumper and uh, in that heavy traffic. Too bad for a young fellow who had perhaps driven the best race of his career here today. Trevor Boyce had, had stayed right up there in the thick of the battle all afternoon long. Still in the lead left. 